Hi there and welcome to this video. We explore the Rohan Codex, this manuscript, discovered in Hungary in the early 19th century, features an unknown script and illustrations. Despite efforts by experts, the language and content of the Codex remain undeciphered, but before we get into the video, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment in this video saying I subscribe and we will personally try to reply to your comment. The Rohan Codex is an illustrated manuscript book that appeared in Hungary in the early 19th century. It is written in an unknown language and writing system, and its author remains unidentified. Numerous scholars and enthusiasts have tried to decipher the text and interpret the illustrations, but no definite conclusions have been reached. While some Hungarian scholars believe it to be a hoax from the 18th century, the true origin and meaning of the Codex remain elusive. The Codex is often referred to as Rohonchi following the old Hungarian orthography that was revised in the first half of the 19th century. This spelling has become prevalent, possibly due to a book released on the Codex by V. in Kayak in 2002. Presently, the Hungarian spelling for the Codex is Rohonchi K. Dex. Regarding the location of the Rohan Codex, it is currently housed in the library of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. However, access to study the Codex requires special permission. As we go through the pages of the manuscripts, it is important to know that unfortunately, only a microfilm copy of the manuscript is available for reference. In 2015, Hamburg University conducted a reskin of the Codex, resulting in the publication of only eight pages in higher resolution. Therefore, at present, we only have access to a black and white copy of the manuscript. The history of the Rohan Codex is as follows. The Codex derived its name from the city of Rohank, located in western Hungary now known as Rechnitz, Austria. It remained in Rohank until 1838 when it was generously donated, along with the entire library of Hungarian Count Gust V. Bathy Nye, to the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. The true origins of the Codex remain a mystery. However, a potential clue to its past can be found in the 1743 catalogue of the Bathy Nye family's library in Rohank. The catalogue entry mentions Hungarian prayers in one volume, size duodecimo, which could potentially describe the Codex. Unfortunately, no further information is provided in the catalogue, making an exact match impossible. Since the Codex became widely known, numerous scholars and enthusiasts have attempted to translate and interpret the text, but no widely accepted or convincing translation has been achieved. Notable individuals who studied the Codex include Hungarian scholar Ferenc Toldi in the 1840s, P. L. Hunfelvi, Austrian paleography expert Albert Moll, and Joseph Jirik and his son Constantine Joseph Jirik, both professors in Prague, who examined 32 pages of the Codex in 1884 to 1885. In 1885, the Codex was sent to Bernhard J. L. G., a professor at Innsbruck University. It was also taken to Paris by the renowned Hungarian painter M. I. H. Lai Monk C. between 1890 and 1892 for further study. In 1866, Hungarian historian K. Roly Shab proposed that the Codex was a forgery created by S. Mool leader T. I. N. E. M. S., a Transylvanian Hungarian antiquarian and co founder of the National Sheech Ni Library in Budapest. N. E. M. S. was known for producing numerous historical forgeries in the 1830s that deceived even esteemed Hungarian scholars of the time. Despite lacking evidence directly linking N. E. M. S. to the Codex, this theory of forgery has been widely accepted by mainstream Hungarian scholarship. The features of the Rohan Codex can be described as follows. The Codex consists of 448 paper pages, measuring 12 by 10 centimeters 4, 7 in 3.9 in. Each page contains between 9 and 14 rows of symbols, which may or may not represent letters. Alongside the text, there are 87 illustrations encompassing religious, secular, and military scenes. These primitive illustrations suggest an environment where Christian, pagan, and Muslim religions coexist, as evident by the presence of symbols like the cross, crescent, and sun or swastika. The number of symbols employed in the Codex exceeds any known alphabet, with a count of 792 recorded by NMT1889. However, most symbols are used with minimal repetition, suggesting that they may not form an alphabet but rather a syllabary or even logographic characters akin to Chinese characters. The alignment of the right margin indicates that the symbols were likely written from right to left. Analysis of the paper used in the Codex indicates that it is most likely Venetian paper manufactured in the 1530s. 
However, this does not provide certainty regarding the date of the text, as it could have been transcribed from an earlier source or the paper might have been utilized long after its production. Drawing insights from the illustrations, L. Eng speculates that the codex was likely created in the 16th or 17th centuries. Regarding the language and script of the Rohan Codex, no definitive hypothesis has emerged as a universally accepted solution. Numerous possibilities have been proposed, including Hungarian, Dacian, Early Romanian or Cuman, and even Hindi. Supporters of the Codex's authenticity in relation to the Hungarian language often suggest that it could be written in a Paleo-Hungarian script or draw parallels to the Old Hungarian script, also known as Hungarian runes Rav SRS. However, these claims lack substantial evidence and require further verification. Additionally, some individuals have noted similarities between the Codex's characters or symbols and those engraved in caves by Scythian monks in the Dobruja region of Romania. Others have suggested connections to certain letters in the Greek charter of the Vesper Mevelgi nunnery in Hungary. Furthermore, there is even a claim that the script could be a variation of the Brahmi script. Despite these proposals, none of them have gained widespread acceptance or been proven as the definitive language or script used in the Rohan Codex. The mystery surrounding its language and script remains unresolved. Regarding the Hungarian hypothesis, Attila Nyri of Hungary proposed a solution in 1996 based on his study of two pages of the Codex. He conducted his analysis by flipping the pages upside down, identifying a Sumerian ligature, and then associating Latin alphabet letters to the remaining symbols based on their resemblance. However, Nyri's method of transliteration proved inconsistent, as he sometimes assigned different letters to the same symbol and vice versa. Additionally, he had to rearrange the order of letters to create meaningful words. According to Nairi, if the text is considered meaningful, it has a religious or possibly liturgical nature. He suggested that the opening lines read, Elt as isn't, she el as ar, vanik as shent angelok, azak. This translates to your God has come, the Lord flis. Oh, there are the holy angels. Them. Oh, Nairi's proposition faced immediate criticism from Ot Gy Rike, who pointed out the flaws in Nairi's deciphering method, which I'll owe. Regarding the Daco Romanian hypothesis, Romanian philologist Viorica Incaic published a proposed translation in 2002. Incaic claimed that the text was written in the vulgar Latin dialect of Dacia and that the writing direction is right to left, bottom to top. According to her alleged translation, the text is an 11th-12th century CE history of the Blocky Vlax people and their struggles against Hungarians and Pekinigs. Various place names and diplomatic contacts are mentioned. Critics of Incaic's translation argue that her method of transliteration is flawed, as symbols that consistently appear together in the codex are inconsistently transliterated with different letters, leading to a loss of patterns in the original code. Furthermore, doubts have been raised about the linguistic and historical authenticity of Incaic's work, as her translation presents linguistic and historical inconsistencies. It is important to note that there is no correlation between the manuscripts C. Regarding the Brahmi Hindi hypothesis, another proposed solution came in 2004 from Mahesh Kumar Singh of India. Singh claims that the codex utilizes a variant of the Brahmi script that is undocumented. According to his transliteration, the first 24 pages of the codex yield a Hindi text, which was then translated into Hungarian. Singh's solution resembles the beginning of an apocryphal gospel, featuring a meditative prologue followed by the infancy narrative of Jesus. Singh's attempt faced immediate criticism in the subsequent issue of the same journal. Many dismissed his transliteration due to its lack of consistency. In terms of systematic attempts, Atgy Rike conducted a methodical investigation of the symbols in 1970. He analyzed repeated sequences to determine the direction of writing, arguing for a right-to-left, top-to-bottom order, with pages also ordered right-to-left. Gy Rike also identified numbers within the text. He later hinted at unpublished conjectures based on a substantial amount of statistical data. In the mid-1990s, Michael S. Loxham Endy conducted computer-based research on the text. He confirmed GYRKS published findings and added his own discoveries. 
While he had no strong arguments, he proposed that the symbol I could serve as a sentence delimiter, represent the number 11, and possibly act as a place value delimiter in numbers. Loxamendi examined the diacritics of the symbols, primarily dots, but found no consistent system in their usage. He also observed no indications of case endings typically found in the Hungarian language, suggesting that the text may be in a different langua. Since 2000, research on the codex has intensified. Benedict L. Eng, in a 2010 article and a subsequent monograph in 2011, summarized previous attempts and explored potential research directions. L. Eng argued against the notion that the Codex is a hoax, contrary to the mainstream consensus in Hungarian academia. Instead, he proposed that it is a consciously encoded or enciphered text. L. Eng considered three possibilities, a cipher, a shorthand system, or a constructed language. He systematically assessed these possibilities in his publications, drawing on historical analogies for insight. In 2010, G. Bortokai published a series of three short articles in the Hungarian popular science weekly, Let S. Tudem Nye, aiming to date the codex by drawing historical analogies from the imagery of the drawings. While Tokai made valuable observations, his conclusions were somewhat ambiguous. Nevertheless, his research was pioneering in nature. Although he could not definitively dismiss the possibility of a hoax, Tokai, like Loxum Endi, emphasized that the text displays regularities strongly suggesting meaning. Several months later, Tokai published two additional short articles in which he began assigning meaning to specific sections of the code. His arguments relied mainly on character strings found in pictures, such as the Inri inscription on the cross. He claimed to have identified codes associated with the four evangelists, constructed from the evangelist's name and a number, possibly representing chapter numbers. Drawing from the work of G.Y. Ri K. and Loxum Endi, Tokai also demonstrate Simultaneously and independently from Tokai, Leveni Zoltan Kir Lai made significant progress in describing certain structural elements of the code. In 2011, Kier Lai presented a method for segmenting the text into sentences with a high probability of accuracy. He identified a seven-page section divided by numbered headings, preceded by a table of contents. Similar to Tokai, Kirillai also discovered the codes associated with the four evangelists. Additionally, he provided a compelling argument for a chapter heading system within the codex that contains biblical references. Kirillai also examined the overall structure of the codex, showing that the chapter structure is absent in the first quarter of the book, likely due to the extended continuous narration of the Passion of Jesus Christ. According to Tokai and Kier Lai, the script represents a coded system that does not reflect the internal structure of words, and the language used in the text is most likely artificial, as suggested by Benedict L. Eng. They propose that the codex contains a probable reference to its writing date of 1593 CE. Furthermore, they state that the codex appears to be an ordinary Catholic reader or breviary of its time, primarily containing paraphrases of New Testament texts, particularly from the Gospels. However, it also includes some non-biblical material, such as the story of Seth returning to the Gate of Paradise or prayers dedicated to the Virgin Mary. Thanks for joining. Please don't forget to love the like button, harmoniously subscribe and enhance the bell for more updates on living a balanced informed life. Also, your comments and feedback are always welcome if you like the content. Signing off from Curio Nexus until next time.